Hi everybody, welcome to level two, part one of Key Digital's online training curriculum, Full Circle Analog Systems. So first of all, congratulations on completing level one, parts one, two, and three. We hope you feel that it's been a rewarding usage of your time and that you've gathered a lot of uh, knowledge about not only Key Digital products, but again, emphasizing uh, technology, the video technologies as a whole, where they are today, what are the options today, and also uh, where things are going in the future. So level two, part one, discusses the full circle analog systems that we're able to complete here at Key Digital. Key Digital, again, being a company that uh, completes that full circle of connectivity, offering it to you in a succinct way with a very versatile line of products that occupy uh, and fulfill your needs in the instance of, as a recap, if your customer needs to extend video, audio, and control via cat cabling, uh, we know from level one, part two, that that is uh, when a cat bound device will be required, where Key Digital has dual cat products, single cat products, um, HDMI products over a single cat that do require shielded cat six, products that do not have certain requirements of what type of cable, etc. And when your client needs to take many sources and go to only one display, a switcher is required. Our Phantom Series HD, uh, KD, HDSW 2x1, 3x1, and 4x1. How about when your customer needs <clears throat> to take one source and go to many displays? Again, from the Phantom Series, we use our distribution amplifiers, KD, HDDA, 1x2, 1x3, 1x4, and we have 1x8 as well. Uh, also in the analog side, that is where our KD Cat DA 4TX came into play, which is terminated by a KD CBARX receive bound. <clears throat> so it's a Cat 5 distribution amplifier. When you have many sources to many displays, and this is really where we're going to begin to, uh, level two here, <clears throat> you're going to need a matrix switcher. Many sources to many displays, a uh, full system, a uh, flexible system, any display can view any source at any given time. But what about the instances where you have sources that may be of various formats, perhaps a composite video source, perhaps an HDMI source, perhaps a uh, VGA or component video source? What do you do in those cases? Well, in those cases, you're going to need a video processor um, known throughout the industry, uh, also as a switcher, scaler, and key digital manufacturers, those solutions as well. In fact, those have been some of our strongest solutions over the years, uh, one of our strongest product categories. And when you combine all of these product categories together, and of course with the cabling in the middle, the HDMI cabling, all the way up to 75 feet, and of course CAT cabling as well, the Super CAT 6, KD CAT 6 STP1X, you can complete that full circle system. So here we are in an application where you have many sources, Blu-ray player, laptop, <coughs> uh, set-top box, camcorder, uh, uh, pro, pro camera, um, and many displays or many outputs of a system potentially, uh, those being projectors, flat panel monitors, displays, um, AV receivers certainly can be classified as display destination, output destinations as well as input destinations. And what if you wanted, again, any of those output destinations to uh, be able to view and listen to any of those sources there? And who could forget the Apple TV that's down there as well? Uh, what do you need? Well, the hub of your system, the, the main router, if you will, the main networking box is a key digital matrix switcher. And today we're discussing those products on the analog front. So what if we told you that with the key digital matrix in the middle, you could simply connect all of your inputs, simply connect all of your output destinations, and <clears throat> any input can be viewable by any output at any time in any combination, making it a very clean system, a uh, professional system where everything's located in, in one central equipment location uh, and then distributed to uh, your output zones accordingly. 
And then what if we told you that not only can we route the video and audio from any source to any display, but with key digital matrix switchers, your control processor can actually be extended greatly, where instead of running an additional wire to uh, your output zones one, two, and three via some key digital matrix products, you're able to also just send a single wire or maybe two wires tops from your control processor to our matrix switcher, and now we can route those control signals to those output zones as well. And that's really what key digital products are all about at this day and age here. Uh, not only routing video and audio as a traditional matrix does, but taking it to the next level and offering again this complete connectivity solution, video, audio, and control. Let's take a look at how we could do that. The before, uh, before mentioned product that does just that, video, audio, and control in the analog world for us at Key Digital is the KD MSW Cat 8x8. MSW Cat 8x8 supports VGA or component video signals. It includes a three wire breakout cable in the box for every component video source. So we are going to take a closer look at this product in just a moment, but uh, you may be thinking, well, those are VGA connections. How does it support component video? Uh, now that we know all of the video connectivity types from uh, level one, part two. Uh, it includes a three-wire breakout cable, so it's capable of passing VGA or component, and it switches via CAT5 out. So just as that CAT DA4TX uh, CAT5 distribution amplifier outputs everything over CAT5 cabling, RJ45 ports on the product, so does the KD MSW CAT 8x8. So 8x8, 8 ins, 8 outs supports all of your component video resolutions from 480p all the way up to 1080p. Again, we have high, high bandwidth products here that support 1080p component video signals. If your source is outputting it and your display can uh, support that, we can as well. Uh, your VESA VGA resolutions, also known as RGBHV, red, green, blue, horizontal, vertical, everything from 640 by 480 all the way up to 1920 by 1200 and everything in between uh, those resolutions are supported here with the KD MSW CAT 8x8. It supports your extensions on the outputs up to 1000 feet and as we discussed with the CVARX termination option we have the video gain adjustments and, and EQ adjustments that enable that sending video, audio, IR or RS-232 control signals to those destinations over a CAT5 cable, CAT5E, CAT6, CAT6 uh, shielded, CAT7. Uh, really, there's no uh, required cabling um, type for the MSW CAT 8x8. Um, of course, we're going to give you some recommendations of a shielded CAT6 or shielded CAT cable if you know that, for example, it might be a little bit of a harsh environmental uh, envir uh, electrical environment. Uh, due to noise or perhaps the source and destination are powered uh, by different electrical panels and we'll recommend shield the cabling there. So it's all about knowing the, uh, again, the necessity, the, uh, the essentials of every video extension, the one-to-one, -one, what's in the middle, what's the environment as we discussed in level 1.2 and le level 1 part 3. Product features full audio control per output and per input in fact of volume, treble, bass, mid, uh, balance, left right balance, and lip sync delay. So we could actually uh, do this on the input side and the output side. So it comes in very handy because you may have one source of your system, and you've probably all experienced this before, when you select that source, it's just always louder than the other sources, kind of an unsettling effect and your customer does not want that. Here on the KDMSW CAT 8x8, we could go ahead and take care of that for you up front. <clears throat> now, the KDMSW CAT 8x8 can be expanded, and we're going to talk about this for, uh, to huge configurations. In fact, it is uh, without a doubt the uh, uh, the product of Key Digital that is uh, that is able to take us to those most large scale configurations, um, the largest of configurations here with this product. So again, taking a quicker look at or a closer look at the product here. Here's a little more uh, high-res photo for us to uh, to gawk at. You have on your left-hand side 
your uh, input connections, eight input connections. You have uh, 15 pin, HD 15 pin, uh, typically known as VGA or RGB HV connection or uh, HD 15, DB 15 connection. This supports VGA, RGB HV or component video. Uh, again, using the included VGA to three wire breakout cables is how you do component. It's important to note that what goes in is what goes out. So component video in means component video on all the outputs. VGA in on, uh, means VGA on all the outputs. And if you're going to have a variety of sources, that's where we use those video processors that we most certainly will be introducing you to a little bit more in depth this here uh, section. Um, <clears throat> for audio, you have two 3.5 millimeter connections actually. It supports analog or digital audio, not both at the same time. The only instance in which you utilize both of those 3.5 millimeter connections is if you had balanced audio going in. Uh, separate left signal, separate right signal, and you need them to go in uh, balanced into each of those 3.5 millimeter connections. We have that available there. If you're using your standard unbalanced uh, left and right RCA um, audio sources, well then in that case you do need to pick up, and this is not included, but pick up a uh, 3.5 millimeter or an eighth inch uh, also known as audio, stereo audio uh, plug to left right RCA Y cable. Uh, these sorts of adapters are of course very common nowadays. Key Digital even manufactures them under our Green Dragon series of products and of course they're very common uh, especially with the, um, uh, the, the huge usage of uh, iPods and um, uh, you know, MP3 player devices. Uh, where they have the 3.5 millimeter plug out and uh, you need to connect it to an iPod dock, perhaps uh, uh, an AV receiver, something of those sorts. You oftentimes are using that adapter piece. On the digital audio side, uh, we, you're going to go in on the 3.5 plug on your right hand RCA. Um, that utilizes a 3.5 mono to RCA uh, adapter piece which is included in the packaging. So uh, again with analog audio if you have left and right balanced audio or unbalanced audio rather uh, it's we usually recommend you just go in on the left hand side if it's digital you're going to go in on the right hand side if it's left right balanced you go in on both of the 3.5 millimeter ports. On the output side here, you see this is an 8x8 switcher, and you actually have two rows of eight RJ45 connections. The bottom row is your output RJ45s. The output RJ45s are what you're going to marry in with uh, to your CVA RX with, okay? KB CVA RX. Uh, the top row is uh, only for use with in systems with more than eight inputs. The 16. Uh, input systems, the 24 input systems, uh, we utilize those ports there. So some of the expansion configurations do util utilize those uh, pass-through uh, expansion connections of the RJ45. Um, they are not available for you if you uh, say you wanted to kind of push the limit here and have two receive balance uh, and you don't mind that they're mirrored for example you think you could go to a CBRX to the expansion row and also to the output row it's going to short one of those connections and it's not going to be of any use to you whatsoever so you, you cannot use it as a means of maybe gaining a few extra outputs of the system so <laughs> note do not try that as it says here in the slide. Now <clears throat> To know these products is not only to know what's on the exterior, but, but really to get an understanding of uh, how powerful key digital matrices are these days. And so to do that, we're going to spend some time talking about really getting to know this product using the help and status commands. These are uh, issued via RS-232 uh, using a terminal software such as HyperTerminal from a computer with a DB9 connection or a USB to serial adapter. So even in the case that you know that you're going to perhaps install this MSWCAT into a system with IR or even just uh, relying upon the front button control option of the KD MSWCAT, uh, you should still plan on having a computer uh, with uh, RS-232 capability to communicate with 
the MSW CAT switcher to really do your initial setup and to really gain an, a full understanding of all of the options of the, uh, the, the switcher. And we're going to look at that with every one of our analog switchers here during this presentation. We'll start with the help command. The help command is simply uh, pressing the letter H in your terminal window and hitting enter with the KDMSW CAT. KDMSW CAT for all RS-232 commands requires a carriage return and a line feed with your hyperterminal software that's uh, essentially uh, satisfied by hitting the enter key. Depending on your software, your terminal software, it may or not, may not be uh, requiring you to uh, enter physically the carriage return and the line feed uh, characters, which are typically backslash R for a carriage return, backslash N for a line feed, and this is going to vary based on your control system, okay? So uh, the help, entering that help command, uh, of course, you're going to follow the protocol outlined in the uh, documentation for the product, which is a uh, baud rate of 57,600. You got your eight, none, one. Your flow control should be set at none. You're going to be entered that terminal software uh, window and hit H enter. And what's going to happen is it's going to respond to you with quite a chatty uh, stream. In fact, every possible RS-232 command, and there's a there's a, a large amount with this product. So let's walk through them, through them here one by one. The uh, first thing it's going to tell you is the model number and the current firmware version. So that in itself can be quite telling if you want to ensure that you have the latest firmware on your product. Um, as you see here, this one actually uh, says KD MSW Cat 4x4, which is a product that uh, used to be offered. MSW Cat 8x8 is now actually the only MSW Cat offered. We do not uh, have 4x4 in manufacturing anymore. There still may be some out there, and by all means, what applies to our discussion here also applies to that 4x4. Um, <clears throat> uh, so after the product information, the unit's information, it's going to give you some uh, a section of help commands where you could issue H for help. Like I said, that's going to be quite a chatty response. Maybe you want to know more about what are my input options. Then you could enter PHI. What are my output options for RS-232 commands that pertain to the output side of the product? You could enter PHO and then hit enter. And you see all of the options there. PF for power off. Uh, of course, PN for power on. Then you'll see, uh, and this is actually a copy and paste from a terminal window. Uh, so the next thing you'll see, and this will all feed out at once, is the input setup commands. Where your input setup commands will always use uh, the characters XX, which will represent your uh, desired input. Always two digits, 0, 1 through 0, 8, unless you're using A for all. A will just be a single A, and if you wanted to have any of these available input commands um, to apply to all of your inputs, then you could just do, for example, uh, if you wanted to have an uh, uh, audio um, volume level set on all, for all inputs um, of uh, volume level set, say 24, the maximum uh, input volume, as it shows you here in that line, SPIA for all inputs, AV24 would be that command string. And then, of course, hit enter or have your appropriate carriage turn line feed uh, characters inserted in the appropriate place, again, depending on the software and the control system that you're using. Um, so you see here that it's not only the commands that we give you, but we also give you a brief description of everything and the parameters for each of the available commands. Uh, one thing that is certainly worth noting here, the final command, S-P-I-X-X-A-T-Y-Y, where you have your audio type. And that's how you're able to uh, determine and tell our switcher where to look for that audio signal. Is it analog? Is it PCM? Is it uh, speed if bypass? Meaning uh, we're not going to offer you actually any volume control or audio control features, but instead we're able to bypass, you know, 5.1 audio uh, speed if signals. <clears throat> Continuing with the uh, response generated by the MSW CAT, for the help when you uh, issue the help command. Uh, this is uh, the largest chunk here, is the output options. The output options include your switching commands. They include your uh, audio control feed, uh, commands per, per output. Uh, just like for the input side, we had audio volume, balance, bass, mid, treble, delay, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> we also have that on the output side. 
Um, as we look here, about uh, two thirds of the way down, or maybe halfway down, uh, you have your video mute, an audio mute, or an audio video mute. So a lot of flexibility there. Just because you mute the audio on one output doesn't mean that you have to mute the video to go along with it, where some of uh, the older products uh, offered by Key Digital and, and certainly in the industry as a, as a whole, uh, maybe when you muted an output, it was both audio and video. Um, switching commands begin uh, right here with the SPOXXSYY command. Um, there's a few switching options. S is going to switch. That's your common switch. When you want to select um, uh, video input 01 and you want the audio input from input 01 to follow that, okay? Um, that is your typical AV switching uh, where the video and audio are from uh, input YY and of course output XX is your output zone. But there's, uh, again, a very flexible and very powerful uh, product this is. There are also switching commands where, for example, SB allows, is, is in switch both, allows you to switch, again, both video and audio. But you see here, you could set a predetermined parameter of AV association, and that's uh, part of the input setup. So just a slide ago, if you wanted to take a look at that command, don't really have time, of course, to give you every command but instead introduce you just to the uh, how powerful it really is. Um, AV association means, uh, when you set that up, basically means, hey, anytime I select source one, I want, uh, for video, source one for video, I want the audio from source five to follow that. And once you set that association up, you then, moving forward, would use your SB switching command. Uh, SI is a video only switching command. SA is an audio only switching command. SR is your IR switching command, where essentially, again, not only a matrix of video and audio, but also IR or RS-232 control signals, we should note here. So uh, we'll give you more information on how we're able to do that uh, in the future slides here. Um, <clears throat> after the SPO commands, where you see every command basically starts with an SP. Um, <clears throat> SPI was your input commands, SPO. Uh, was the prefix, if you will, of every output command. SPC is all of your control type commands. And here, this is uh, very valuable stuff here. Um, uh, this is most of your initial setting type uh, information is going to be, uh, is when you'll utilize these control uh, setup commands. For example, SPC VTX, video type. Um, is this a component system or is this a VGA system? Uh, you need to specify. Okay, actually out of the box, this is set as a default to component video systems. Um, unless you tell us otherwise, if you have a big, large scale custom configuration, we're going to gather that information from you. If it's just a standard 8x8 eight eight, eight eight alone in the box, standalone unit, we're not going to set that up. It's going to be set as component video for you as the default because this product is used in sports bars galore. Component video is the most common application. Um, output type max, uh, mask, SPC C5TXX, that relies upon um, hex characters where you see the zero value means that you're terminating a specific output with a VAC RX bound. And you notice we didn't talk about that in, previous, um, in the previous balance section. The reason being the VAC RX is no longer uh, in manufacturing. So we wanted to make sure that this training is not going to be immediately dated. We're not manufacturing VAC TX, KD VAC RX, or KD VAC WPRX. But in the case that you have some on hand, this is also a compatible balance. Um, if your hex value has a, is a one, uh, then that is the CVARX balance, which we did discuss in the previous slides, and which is a current part number here at Key Digital. So uh, because that's the current part, um, everything going forward with the MSWCAT is set up at, uh, to be terminated with the CVARX. You can enable or disable your front button control. We could gather the RS-232 responses based on any VACRX balance being connected. You could do RS-232 masking, uh, which we'll certainly discuss in further uh, depth along the way. Um, 
you have this is uh, where you have many of the control routing features come into play here that in itself is a whole section of, of the discussion here um, <clears throat> We also have uh, some of your system setup commands where, as I said, you could stack multiple of these units making some very large scale systems. Um, in, in those cases, your SPC NIXX command comes into play. That's the third to the bottom there where you set the number of inputs of the system. For example, it's, a, it's available in multiples of eight, uh, eight, 16, 24, 32, and we're going to have a look at those sorts of uh, commands that are available to you. Uh, the unit number, and of course, SPCDF is a factory default reset. Um, now, we're going to look at, uh, oh, uh, before the status commands, uh, status, when we prompt uh, for st the MSWCAT for status, you'll see is also quite chatty, just as the help is. Uh, maybe not quite as long for this product's uh, case. But um, if you want a response that's a little more uh, to the point, not the entire system, uh, as we see here, STA, global system status, but instead you want to just know your status of your control uh, portion of the product or the input or the output portion, you could uh, issue the appropriate status command, even so much as uh, narrowing it down to a specific input or output status. <clears throat> when you refer to the help response, um, most commonly is that first time usage. Again, just really getting to understand the product, uh, to really master. Make sure you're getting the most uh, out, of your, out of your product. Um, it is, after all, a very uh, uh, robust, uh, very powerful piece. I mean, I, can't, I don't know how many times I could uh, emphasize that it's, a, it's extremely powerful matrix switcher, that there's not too many manufacturers out there that are able to offer something like this. Um, <clears throat> The help response is a, a nice guide. It's very easy to pull up. Um, <clears throat> and really, when you think about this, you see everything that goes in here. Again, as we discussed in Level 1, Part 1, Key Digital is an engineering company here. This, is, uh, this type of product really epitomizes all of the options that we're able to offer you as a result. Um, having that engineering on staff, Having that engineering, uh, uh, instead of just picking out products from the catalog overseas and saying, stick my uh, uh, silkscreen on this product, that product, and that pro product, of course, uh, adds cost to, uh, to our, um, our daily operations here at Key Digital. Um, so, again, as we discussed, Key Digital is not the cheapest product out there. When you get a product like this, you know it's going to have a lot of value, a lot of power. Here's your way to maximize it. So even again, can't say it enough, even if you're not going to be controlling your system via IR or via or via 232 rather, and instead you're going to use an IR or touch button type control of it, um, we recommend you come out there with your initial install uh, with a device where you can prompt for the help command from the product. Similarly, status. So help and status are just uh, above and beyond the most helpful uh, ways of learning your product and uh, I like to do it whenever we do a tech support call here for a customer with a product like this. Um, anytime I hear that they might be doing some things there that are, that are just really uh, emphasizing the value of the product, I always give them the nickel tour of the product through help and through status. Uh, status, just like with the help commands, is broken into section. Uh, again, you have the, uh, the model number at the top here. As you can see, I actually I accidentally had a 4x4 when I prompted the help command. Here with the 8x8, uh, I had it plugged in to, to gather the status info. Um, <clears throat> global system status, video type. Right now it's set up for component video mode, for example, or if you had issued the uh, video type with the, uh, using the command that we saw in the help uh, response uh, to RGBHV, you would see it there. Okay, so it's not just shots, uh, shots in the dark. Um, IR masking, so your control uh, and RS-232 masking, your control options of the product, okay. Um, <clears throat> you have your input status. Uh, input 1, uh, audio is set to uh, volume 12, which is the default out of the box. Uh, Bass, uh, uh, I'm sorry, balance rather, is set to 6. Uh, we'll show you all those parameters there. Uh, your base, your low, L is set to 12. 
mid 12, treble 12, associated with audio 01. So you see here that there's no custom uh, AV associations here. One is with one all the way through to eight associated with eight. On the output side, this tells you what is every output selecting. Uh, output one, for example, is selecting input one. Audio input one for video and uh, video and audio is input one. The IR is, is one as well. IR is like its own, uh, can be its own matrix there actually in the case of component video systems. So again, we're going to discuss that in a little bit more uh, depth. Mute interval, or it's, it's active, meaning it's, uh, it's not muted, it's not disabled that output. Um, uh, mute interval, actually you probably saw that in the help commands previously. Uh, mute interval is a means of uh, kind of slowing your switching time because some displays out there uh, will behave differently when you do a switch command and if it's very fast they may not like that so much and they may uh, spaz out a little bit so to, so to speak. So to use the technical term here. huh? Um, so you can see the output status command and, uh, and, and also very important here where you have the ballon equals CV. Again, this box was just straight out of the package here where I plugged in and uh, this was the default settings, ballon type, uh, uh, the KD CV ARX indicated by the CV, uh, video type as we saw in the previous slide, component video. And where you see the end there, KD MSW CAD 8x8, that means that it's done. And at the bottom of your terminal software, you'll see, most likely see a blinking, uh, a blinking um, cursor. Okay, so we talk about the KD MSW CAT 8x8 and how now the current uh, uh, product that is still available that marries in with that is the KD CVA RX. Again, used to marry in with both the KD VAC RX as well as the KD CVA RX, but the KD VAC RX going the way of the dodo bird. Uh, KDCVARX is now your current Bowen termination point uh, with the KDMSW CAT 8x8. Now we looked at this product already uh, in uh, level one part uh, part one and in level one uh, part I'm sorry level one part two and level one part three. Um, when you use it with the KDMSW CAT 8x8, there is actually a special pinout that is required. Okay, and we map this pin out here. And additionally, with the KD MSW CAT 8x8, there, uh, this is well documented in the uh, manual addendum that is, uh, can be found on the product page on keydigital.com and, of course, is included in the uh, shipping in the packaging as well. So there's a special pin out. It's not a straight through termination. Um, we recommend the, uh, well, one side needs to be 568B, the other side is custom. Uh, actually, it does not really matter which side is which, but uh, when you look at this, what you want to do is, is connect one to one, two to two, three to three, uh, and, and, and that's all outlined in the documentation. So don't really go by the colors um, if you have to do it some special way, but if you have the option of uh, terminating the cable and without renting some uh, exp expensive lift to get you up to the projector, uh, then go ahead and do this. But if you maybe aren't able to, uh, to, to go and re-terminate that cable at this point, then there is, you could kind of swap it around. Uh, just give Key Digital Technical Support a call and we'll work through it with you. So the KD CVARX uh, with the MSW CAD 8x8, again, requires a special pinout. Um, and it, it not only supports uh, video and audio, but also IR or uh, unidirectional RS-232 signals can be uh, extended via the H channel of the RGB HV signal. Uh, therefore, of course, you can't have H for video and IR or 232. So this uh, control extension is only possible in the case of a component video run uh, with the KD CVA RX bound. So how does this work? Well, here's uh, some basic information. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. So, uh, you know, take your time to pause the screen if need be and, and make some notes on your notepad. Um, <clears throat> basically, from your control processor, you're going to have an IR signal. Uh, <clears throat> You know, we recommend actually 232 to control our matrix, okay? So IR or 232 or even front panel control to control our matrix. Now how the control routing over H works is actually you provide a second, uh, second and more uh, input ports uh, to 
be fed into the H of a five wire breakout cable, RGB, HB again. Okay, well now we're using uh, Y, P, R, P, B, again, red, green, blue, uh, and H will be the IR or the control signal. Uh, the V of that five wire breakout cable is uh, essentially gonna remain open. Now the five wire breakout cable is not included with the KD CVARX or the KD MSW CAT 8x8. Uh, those products include a three wire breakout cable. So if you want to do this control routing with this uh, given uh, product pairing, you need to pick up these uh, VGA to five wire breakouts on your own. Um, <clears throat> and like we showed you before, the uh, control routing over H is actually a matrix of its own. So what that means is um, you can provide uh, an IR signal into input one, and that could be set up as a switch, if you will, to have that IR signal go to uh, be selected by any output one through eight of that respective unit. Um, or you can provide us multiple uh, IR signals onto the H channel um, because essentially out of the box what goes into input 1's H channel goes out of output 1's H channel. What goes into input 2's H channel goes out of output 2's H channel. Of course that continues respectively all the way to output 8. So, we talk about the uh, KDMSWCAT being possible, some very large configurations. Well, here's exactly what we mean by that. Of course, 8x8 is a standalone unit, and then everything from here on out we consider custom configurations. Key Digital has a SKU for each and every one of these possible configurations because you will order it as such. With Key Digital, this is all possible. It's going to be a combination of uh, wiring, of interconnecting, it's going to be a combination of uh, hardware modifications, software modifications, firmware modifications, uh, depending on the, uh, the configuration you will have. So you want to order that, uh, cor the, the correct configuration from us. You do not want to say buy three units and, um, and hope that, <coughs> and, and, and configure the 8x24 on your own, although we're actually going to show you what goes into that. But um, what we're looking at here is basically a SKU. We do the setup here at the Key Digital Factory. All the interconnecting software firmware is loaded. Uh, we ship it to you as one system, not as three independent units working together. And as you can see, we cover everything from 8 by 16 uh, through 8 by 128. Uh, basically, it grows in multiples of eights. So uh, you'll see you'll see that in a moment. All the way up to 160 inputs with eight outputs is even possible. So how do we make these configurations? There, <clears throat> as we discussed, there's some RJ45 expansion ports on the KDMSW CAT. Um, additionally, uh, some configurations will require a special wiring harness as well. So they come pre-configured in the factory. Um, <clears throat> field expansion is possible via RS-232, okay? So let's take a look. When you, when you do these kind of setups with the MSW CAT, basically, as you saw the commands earlier, uh, SPC EX um, <clears throat> XX, that's your address. It's an expansion mode now, and what address is this unit? Uh, SPC and IXX, as we discussed, the number of inputs, you're gonna, that's always going to be a multiple of eight. 8 inputs, 16 inputs, 24 inputs, uh, all the way through 160 inputs. Uh, SPC TRM, termination, this is actually very, very important. It refers to 75 ohm termination of a video signal. This is not termination as in terminating your wiring. Uh, so uh, termination is very important. Um, <clears throat> if you have one unit in a standalone mode, of course, termination should be on, allowing for proper 75 ohm uh, signal to flow throughout the system. But if you were in the field and you called us up and you said, hey, we're buying a second unit, we need to uh, do this configuration on our own, we didn't really foresee this happening, the customer's throwing a curveball at us, how do we do this? We're going to tell you all the units need, uh, of a custom configuration um, need to be uh, unterminated, termination off, except for one unit of an eight input system. Uh, two units will need to be terminated in a 16 input system, three units terminated in a 24 input system. You could kind of see where this is going now. So 
uh, basically, if you had an 8x64 system, that's eight units, uh, only one of those eights needs to uh, have their termination uh, remaining in the on position, where uh, all seven, the remaining seven of those eight will be unterminated, and that allows 75 ohms proper termination to flow throughout the system. What happens if you don't have that? Well, it could go one of two ways. Uh, having multiple units uh, with the termination on is usually going to cause like what's referred to as a blooming of the image, which is an overly white image. You try watching a hockey game and you're not going to see much other than the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the shirts in the crowd. Uh, you know, you're not going to see much maybe other than the dark of the jerseys uh, floating around that ice. Um, if none of your units are terminated, well, it's going to be overly dark. So here we look at an 8 by 40 system. So this is a system with uh, 8 inputs and again all the way up to uh, 126 outputs as possible. So just to show you what it looks like here, uh, first thing you do, you set the uh, expansion address, uh, SPCEX unit 1, you can see it there, unit 2, uh, usually we work from the top and go to the bottom. Okay. Secondly, we set the number of inputs. They know they're in expansion mode, but how many inputs does this system have? In the case of this, uh, all of these products will receive SPC NI08 commands. Uh, so and it bears mentioning that uh, you have to issue, or you should issue these commands to each unit uh, with a direct connection, bypassing any kind of uh, RS-232 Y cabling that might be included with uh, the wiring harness, okay? Because you send address 2 command to all the units, well now they're all address 2 after all. And finally, SPC TRM termination off, so 0, 0 for all the units except for SPC TRM 01 to the bottom unit. So we recommend, we always do it uh, here in the factory with the bottom unit termination on. And uh, if you're going to be doing this in the field, we recommend you do it as well because it's going to make life that much easier should you ever need to call us here at Key Digital uh, in, in describing your system. Okay, so you can see here there's a Y cable of sorts in this product's, uh, in this system's case, an 8x40 is 5 units. There's a 1 to 5 VGA Y cable. And if you're connecting component video sources, well, the, uh, the single lead off of each of those Y cables is uh, it has that 3.5, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, DB15 to 3 RCA breakout for you to plug into. And these Y cables, of course, are extremely high quality. This is a method that Key Digital has used for years and years now to achieve large scale matrix configurations. And uh, the software settings with what we're issuing here through the uh, RS-232 actually ensures that whether it be output 1 or output 40 of this system, they're all going to look exactly as if it is a direct one-to-one -one connection between source and display. When we look at a 16 input system, uh, the possible configurations are 16 by 8 through uh, 16 through 64. Uh, 16 input systems, basically you take the amount of hardware required for an 8 input system and you double it. So uh, in this application here, you're looking at a 16 by 32. If it were an 8 by 32, adding a second unit brings us to 8 by 16, a third unit 8 by 24, a fourth unit 8 by 32. In a 16 input configuration, again, it's double. Uh, so instead of four units for 8 by 32, you have eight units, as you see here, for a 16 by 32 configuration. So you may be looking at your uh, price listing of Key Digital and say, boy, if that's a big jump from eight to, uh, input system to a 16 input system, well, now you know why. It's double the hardware. And now we begin to utilize the uh, RJ45 uh, expansion ports, as you can see here, uh, depicted with a bold red line interlink interlinking respective outputs. So output eight, uh, or uh, expansion port eight of unit one is linked with expansion port uh, uh, eight of unit two. And so how this happens is you have your Y cables again for your sources one through eight, they feed into units one, three, five and seven so your odd number inputs for your inputs nine through sixteen they feed uh units even number units two four six and eight of course and what actually happens to uh, kind of describe the process of switching here how this is all made possible um, because you have that linking there uh via the rj45s it's actually a two-part um, sequence, any switching command always involves at least two units. So uh, say for example you wanted your output 
number 8 to select your input number 1. Output 8 selecting input number 1. What happens? Okay. First of all, uh, you see here that output 8 is actually connected to, uh, is a linking of both unit 1 and unit 2. So both unit 1 and unit 2, output number 8, both switch to select their input number 1. Now the second part of the sequence is that the uh, uh, one of these switchers becomes dominant, the other becomes uh, passive, if you will, meaning that uh, because we want input 1, uh, unit 1 is our dominant switcher, and uh, unit 2, where actually unit 2's input 1 is, is actually input 9 of the system, becomes the passive switcher and actually mutes its output. It mutes its output, therefore the signal comes in, uh, give it the channel from unit 1, and that's how you switch output 8 to input 1. It's always a two-part sequence. If you wanted to select output 8 to select input 9, the exact same thing would happen, except for unit 2 becomes dominant, unit 1 becomes passive, and, uh, and mutes. Okay? So because of the two-part uh, uh, sequencing of the commands, uh, you can see that we add a new command here, uh, SPC FBD, front button disable. Okay, that's our front buttons. We want them off because if you go up to one of these units and you uh, push one of the buttons, well, obviously that's only going to affect one unit, not two, and it's going to throw the system off. If your system becomes out of sync due to, say, uh, power failure to one of the units yet switching happening that should affect or that should involve that that unit that is uh, dead or without power uh, then you will notice that the sync comes out uh, or the sync becomes lost uh, your video signal could essentially um, be nothing at all or even you may be looking at multiple image uh, multiple images on that screen one on top of the next Okay, so it's, it's not going to look too pretty and you'll know that something's wrong pretty easily. Um, so the front buttons are always disabled for a 16 input system and greater. And furthermore, the LEDs on the front, of course, are still active, but they're not really going to show, uh, they're not really going to mean anything to you. Where if you look at the close-up picture we had earlier of the MSW Cat 8x8, you could see that there was some meaning to what each of the LEDs uh, corresponded with. Uh, we'll go one more larger here, 24 input system. It's exactly the same principle as the 16 input system, except for uh, every output is actually a linking of three matrix systems. Unit one gets uh, <coughs> unit one gets inputs one through eight. Unit uh, uh, well, you can see here, unit one and uh, one, two, and three are actually the linkings of your inputs one uh, through eight, and that's how we do it here. Inputs nine through 16 uh, are units four, units uh, uh, five, and six. So one, two, three for inputs one through eight, four, five, six for inputs nine through 16. Of course, leaving us with units seven, eight, and nine uh, being the units where your inputs 17 through 24 are fed into. And the exact same thing happens with the, as a 24, uh, as it would in the 16 input system with the 24 input system, where two of the matrix outputs become dominant, uh, or excuse me, become passive, and one, of course, is, there can only be one dominant uh, unit within the switch. Okay, very well. So that covers the KD MSW Cat 8x8. Now let's look at the KD MSV 8x8. Again, we try to keep the nomenclature quite simple here at Key Digital. KD MSV 8x8 it stands for Key Digital uh, Matrix Switch Video. Eight inputs, eight outputs. Okay, you see the possible uh, expansion configurations that are uh, here listed: eight by eight, all the way to eight by sixty-four, sixteen by eight to sixteen by sixty-four, uh, and all the way uh, the maximum number of inputs is forty-eight by uh, forty-eight inputs, uh, and we can do forty-eight ins with forty-eight outs. Now, this is a fantastic switcher, also very uh, prevalent in the uh, sports bar, uh, bar and restaurant type applications because these uh, require a large amount of displays, 
um, in most cases, um, and maybe not a budget that fully uh, facilitates an HDMI system. So the KVMSV is very good. Uh, each input, uh, let me step back here, excuse me. Each input and each output connection is three RCAs, red, green, and blue. So it's component video only, that's it. Uh, no VGA support, uh, can support composite video, but we have another switcher for that that we're, we're gonna introduce you to here in just a few moments. So this is a very good product that's uh, quite cost effective and uh, has been a staple here at Key Digital for uh, probably going uh, maybe five years plus now at this point. Um, again, just like with the KDMSW CAT 8x8, you have a help command. Uh, the help command is not, is not going to give such an elaborate response as it does in the KDMSW CAT 8x8 because MSV uh, units are very simple units. Uh, they are switchers, um, they have muting, they have the mute interval adjusting uh, as well, uh, but not any control routing, uh, no audio to worry about or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> now, the uh, protocol for MSV 8x8 is of course uh, outlined in the documentation for the product. Uh, 57,600 is the baud rate on it. And just like the MSW CAT 8x8, in fact, the entire protocol is the same, except for being that this is an older product, this often, uh, or the older products often did not require a carriage return or a line feed. So no carriage return, no line feed required here for KD MSV 8x8. So when you hook up to it with your terminal software, you just hit that letter H and automatically it's going to send that command. Uh, the MSV 8x8 recognizes that it is a valid command and will respond with your uh, switching command. Here we use the SPOXXSIYY switching command, uh, which was utilized on the MSWCAT as the video only switching command, if you require, uh, if you remember, excuse me. Um, <coughs> the, uh, as we go on through the output switching, there's also a number of control type setup commands. Uh, IR sensor enable, disable, front buttons enable, disable. So in a 16 input system, really you don't want to rely on uh, IR uh, or front buttons as we described. Any input, any system with more than eight inputs, we at Key Digital would of course fully recommend an RS-232 control system to, to have control of that configuration. Because just like with, I, uh, with front button control, with IR, it's very hard to say that the uh, units that need to receive the command to understand that, hey, I need a mute now, for example, will actually receive it with IR being that it's all uh, line of sight. Um, some uh, nice uh, bit here, SPC RSN and SPC RSV. This is very good for your uh, bi-directional control systems in, in which uh, uh, you might want more of a, a computer type status versus a, uh, a, a human type status. Uh, that's again SPC RSN, SPC RSV. Um, let's take a look at how we make uh, these command, uh, these uh, large-scale configurations in just a moment, and you'll understand what some of those other commands are for there. Uh, in the status uh, for the MSV 8x8, uh, power is on, the system address 00, just a default unit right now. Um, <clears throat> front panel buttons are enabled, okay. Uh, you have response mode for RS-232, numeric response. Uh, that may be something, I think that actually you get the verbose response in uh, an out-of-the-box unit, okay? So you can see here, uh, expansion mode has been enabled here, so in fact the unit I pulled this uh, status information from was not straight out of the box. This uh, obviously had some uh, custom settings made to it at one point in time. Um, for the output status, again, just like with the MSW CAT, it's going to show you what each and every output is selecting. Currently your output one is selecting your input one. Uh, the mute interval is set to zero, 00, which is the uh, default setting out of the box. So here's a uh, sample of what some of these very large scale systems look like. This was a uh, uh, KD MSV uh, 8x48 system, which is uh, six units, and it was also a KD MSA 8x8 Pro. 8 by 48. So you actually have a total of 16 of our uh, key digital matrix switchers in this rack. And 
And just to uh, further the point of how we take care of everything here, we're not going to send you 16 different matrix switchers with a, a piece of paper saying, hey, here, here's your 16 switchers, best of luck configuring this for, for uh, questions, comments, complaints, call Key Digital. No sir, uh, no ma'am. Instead, we of course take care of that here for you in the Key Digital factory. All the interconnects, all the wiring, all of your software, firmwares are updated. You see even on the back here, we have some of our passive balance. Mm -hmm. the, which are uh, housed in a rack plate. We also have an input panel for your video and audio signals that the uh, dealer required. Okay, so this is a very nice system and once you receive it, we make it plug and play, whereas uh, essentially we could be saving you thousands of dollars in uh, man hour and labor, etc. So how do we make these large configurations with the MSV 8x8? Essentially it's the same principle as the MSW CAT. So just like with the help and status, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time going each and every one of those things. But we do have uh, a large number of configurations possible. Anything from uh, with 8 inputs, 8x16 through 8x64. You can see that your inputs 1 through 8 each get their own uh, Y cable. Here's a 64 output system, so that is 8 units. So this is a 1x8 Y cable, okay? Um, and just as you saw before with that input uh, input bay, it's very easy to know where you're supposed to plug in your inputs one uh, Y, P, R, P, B connection, respectively, input two, input three, all the way to input eight, very clearly marked. When we look at a 16 input system, again, the exact same thing happens, except for here, of course, we do not have any uh, RJ45 expansion linkings. Uh, it is all, again, RCA connections, three RCAs per in, three RCAs per out. So there's a, essentially a one by two Y cable, or should I say a two by one Y uh, interlinking for each output. Uh, and just to describe th this again, uh, inputs one through eight feeds matrices one, three, five, uh, and seven. Uh, <coughs> the uh, inputs nine through 16's Y linkings feed matrices or units two, four, six, and eight. And then your output side, uh, units one and two are linked, three and four are linked, five and six are linked, uh, seven and eight are linked in an eight by 64 system. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at an analog matrix switcher that supports left and right analog audio plus PCM digital coaxial audio matrix switching. That PCM digital coaxial can also be used uh, for composite video in and out. And we'll discuss how you go about setting that up. So this is KDMSA 8x8 Pro. This is a second generation product. Some of you may be familiar with KDMSA 8x8, the predecessor to this version, where KDMSA 8x8 Pro uh, was released with a wide variety of audio control features such as volume control, um, multi-band EQ, lip sync control, also is a full independent matrix switcher of that left and right audio from that PCM RCA uh, connection or composite video RCA connection. So we'll discuss that in uh, more depth here in a moment. So this is the uh, analog audio matrix switcher where of course we've discussed a number of matrix switchers uh, and a, a number of our products that usually handle video and audio together uh, within the same product. Here, uh, this is a great product to complement the KD-MS-V 8x8. The KD-MSA 8x8 Pro uh, essentially could be the brother-sister product to that. Or, of course, there's a number of other uh, applications where this is going to come in handy, but it can be the sister product to the KDMSV 8x8 because, again, one of the main applications for that KDMSV 8x8 is the sports bar application where you may need an 8x64 matrix or a 16x64 matrix, for example, but you may not need that many zones of audio because typically in the sports bar world, the bar restaurant world, you're just routing video to those displays and maybe there are multiple zones of audio but typically that many zones uh, the, the, the number of audio zones does not correspond exactly to the amount of video displays in the system so here this allows 
A little more flexibility when you're building your systems. You have the KD MSV 8x48, for example, and then you can have the KD MSA 8x8 Pro in a 8x16 configuration or a 16x8 configuration or 8x8, just depending on how many ins do you need, how many output zones of audio is there going to be. Uh, of course, this can totally be utilized in the exact same configuration of the MSV 8x8 when you're building your, your system and you're designing that system. Um, it's, it's just a matter of uh, do you plan to send audio to the displays or is this going to be the matrix and the pre-amplifier for, uh, for your audio amplifiers or distributed audio systems, for example. So when we take a closer look, you can see the LCDs, uh, the LED lights rather, of each output. Uh, you actually have two rows of LEDs and those correspond to the left and right analog audio uh, is one of the rows of <coughs> uh, the uh, bottom row, the A row here that you can see, audio or analog rather is what that stands for, where the top row, the blue LED, uh, corresponds to what the video or PCM, V slash P, uh, is, is currently selecting. So this is a full in, uh, independent matrix of analog from that digital or PCM connection, which is the black RCA connection that we see here. Um, there is a very convenient pattern that each output will make uh, when muted, and that is uh, where you have your first, second, seventh, and eighth LED illuminated or three, four, five, and six are not illuminated. Anytime you see that, that means that your output has been muted. And it's actually quite important to, uh, uh, to have a, an indicator like that where sometimes uh, uh, in the past with other products, people have uh, suspected the matrix has perhaps had a problem uh, where an RMA may be necessary, but we issue a few simple commands whether it be via the IR remote or RS-232 and uh, to unmute that specific output or maybe even all outputs and voila, your system is up and running. So we added this uh, pattern there to help you identify whether your, your issue is actually with the matrix or just a simple mute has been enabled. So again, independent matrix of audio, uh, analog audio from the digital audio or the composite video connection and that's all controllable uh, via IR RS-232. Actually, on the front panel there, uh, these will switch together, both video and audio or PCM and analog audio. Uh, so again, if you're using the front button control, you will see both rows of LEDs uh, sequentially change as you continue to press those buttons there for your respective output. Now, so let's talk a little more in depth about these audio control features. And of course, we're going to take a look here at the help and status commands as well. But uh, for example, volume control, a range of uh, almost 100 different volume uh, settings, uh, 00 through 96. Uh, even 00, though, is not a complete audio disconnect, as um, there, that is actually a separate command we'll look at. And so in those cases, you may still hear a little bit of a humming, so that's not really the level set you want to use for a complete mute. Balance is uh, 0, 0 through 40, where your default setting, of course, being 20, so you could shift uh, whether you'd like to, to, to uh, be more to the left, more to the right. Bass is uh, 0, 0 through 24. Of course, the default there, right in the middle at 12. Mid, 0, 0 through 24. Default 12. Treble, 0, 0 through 24. Default level set is 12. So you can see all of your EQ. Uh, three band EQ. Delay. Now delay is uh, very handy in the case of uh, <clears throat> trying not only to sync with the displays, uh, perhaps as you go uh, maybe just through a single matrix to the display versus the audio is coming through a matrix, through a processor, uh, through the amplifier, etc. You could sometimes as you add steps and steps of connectivity. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some delay. Also, there's just some uh, inherent delay issues that may uh, arise when you have multi uh, different pieces for handling your video and your audio. And uh, for example, a lot of displays nowadays do internal processing. 
A lot of displays do frame rate conversion, for example, from 60 frames per second to 120 frames per second to 240 hertz or frames per second. And that in itself can present issues when you have your video and your audio going through different uh, pieces of equipment. Also, just the very nature of audio sampling rate versus video sampling rate. Again, video is typically at 60 frames per second where audio, for example, 48 kilohertz, 48,000 frames per second. So we have the lip sync delay that's uh, values are 00 through 99, and that 99 is actually a full 600 milliseconds of delay that we can compensate for. Now let's take a look at the various switching types because KD MSA 8x8 Pro, as the features and benefits told you, it actually can handle analog to digital and digital to analog audio conversion. So there are four main switching types. Uh, type one is a simple bypass. As we follow the red lines there of your analog audio one through eight, and uh, your PCM input audio one through eight, as you read from uh, top to bottom on, on the left-hand side of this uh, diagram. Your stereo left and right anal analog audio in is your stereo left and right analog audio out. You do have audio control features. What's important to uh, recognize about these diagrams here is that every output has a single audio processor. So keep that in mind as we discuss these and it'll make, uh, make more sense um, or will make sense more quickly to you. So there's a single audio processor. So if you have left and right analog audio in and bypass that to left and right analog audio out, uh, you, will, you will have the audio control features in the bypass mode. And actually I guess why we call it bypass mode is more of the, uh, as it pertains to the PCM coaxial inputs, uh, because really, if you have the audio control options for the analog, that is not a bypass, is it? So PCM coaxial is able to be uh, bypassed. And that what that means is you're not going to have any volume control, uh, delay, equalization, etc. of the PCM. Okay, but this is where you get your full support for your multi-channel audio formats that the PCM connection supports, etc. So uh, when we go beyond that two-channel, we can't really have that uh, the, the volume control, etc., because again, there's only one audio processor per output. We look at our second switching type. This is a composite video bypass, so pretty much the same handling of the left and right analog. However, the uh, PCM or composite video RCA, we place a special handling on that routing uh, that is a uh, handling that is more for the bandwidth of a composite video signal, the termination of a video signal versus a digital audio, and of course there's no manipulation able to be performed on a composite video signal here, simply a bypass, again full independent matrixing of the left and right from the composite video signal. The third switching type, this is where we begin to discuss the uh, conversion features of the MSA 8x8 Pro analog to digital. So we follow the red here. Uh, as you can see, the red is going to be active. The black is, is essentially disabled. So in the analog to digital um, conversion switching type of the product, your stereo left and right analog audio inputs are able to be uh, output on the left and right RCA output side with audio control. And your stereo left and right analog audio inputs come out as well uh, as the PCM audio connection and it's the same audio control. So if you increase your volume, uh, that affects all three output RCA connections, left, right, and PCA, PCM per that output. Finally, the fourth switching type is D to A, where we're able to take your incoming digital analog, or excuse me, digital audio signals and output them as analog. So your PCM coaxial input becomes uh, stereo left and right on the output side. Uh, again, on that output, you have the audio control features. And what we do for the PCM coaxial is we bypass. So that means that there are there is some support of um, <coughs> multi-channel audio formats of that incoming PCM and outputting that as two-channel audio and still giving you that audio control. 
So it's a very, uh, very cool product that has many advantages. Uh, again, uh, it is often utilized uh, as a preamp, if you will, uh, to the amplifier that perhaps doesn't have audio control, doesn't have EQ, etc. Just simply an amplifier. Um, I have a number of dealers who will simply utilize this as an audio delay uh, mechanism because there used to be more products available in the marketplace that were, that were uh, simple pieces adding that audio delay that uh, according to these dealers they're not quite as readily available as they used to be and in those cases this is a nice piece to, uh, to add to your system really as a pass through if you will uh, input one is output one, input two is output two all the way through input eight is output eight um, really not using it for its switcher, switching capabilities in other words but adding the delay or similarly any of the audio control features um, digital to analog, analog to digital uh, this is nice to have it all in one box where many of you are familiar with all the additional tchotchkes, if you will, that would have had to have been purchased uh, to accomplish this D to A and A to D audio conversion. So let's take a look at the help command of the KD MSA 8x8 Pro to uh, just give you uh, an idea of the full amount of possibilities. Uh, the help command, the uh, specific help uh, help features. Uh, if you want help, as you can see, we'll, we'll go over here. And as you've seen from the other products we've looked at, the help that can be quite lengthy. Here, if you want just help for your input side, help for your output side, you could uh, achieve that with PHI and PHO, for example. Um, there is a uh, note in the in the help response that tells you if your unit is addressed because it's in an expansion configuration for example uh, some of these commands may require the prefix a as an address zz where zz is your unit address on the input side we have uh, uh, the associated audio um, uh, opportunity where perhaps you'd like to have, uh, this is most commonly used with composite video switching, so I'll give this application example, where anytime you select composite video input one, you'd always like that to be associated with analog audio input five. Uh, that sort of uh, association is possible, and it's also very convenient because then at that point, you can do your switching commands in a single command, as there's a special switching command for associated audio relationships. On the output side here, um, this is where you have your volume, balance, uh, bass, mid, treble, and delay. Uh, all of these commands, again, just like before, we, we keep things very uh, uniform here. SP is always the, 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 the prefix to all the commands. Uh, o for the output side commands. SPO, XX, AV, YY is output XX, setting that audio volume to level set YY, where we looked at before, 00 through 96 are the options. Additionally, you could use U to just bump up that volume uh, incrementally, or D to bump down that volume incrementally. Um, here we look at the output type. This is the switching types we just discussed. Uh, so for it's, it's actually per output. This, the four switching types that we discussed does not have to be an umbrella statement applying to the entire system, if you will. So uh, output type, uh, output XX could be set for uh, type one, output type, uh, output, excuse me, eight, for example, could be set to uh, type three, which would be your analog to digital um, audio conversions. Uh, etc. So you set it per output there, uh, again, just in adding to the flexibility of the product. Continuing with the output commands, you have your video mute, you can have an audio mute, you can have an AVM uh, audio video mute, uh, or PCM mute. So really this is going to be, uh, again, depending on the type of uh, switch type that you've set the, uh, the unit up for, okay? Mute interval, uh, as we discussed earlier, mute interval re refers to, do you want it to be a quick hard switch? Uh, that would be a zero, zero mute interval setting, or would you like it to be uh, a little bit more of a, uh, a nice soft switch? And you could uh, 
<laughs> adjust that in the mute interval setting. Uh, your switching commands, uh, S-P-O-X-X-S-Y-Y, is the switch command that uh, switches all three of the RCAs. If you're selecting input one with output five, you're selecting input one's left and right analog audio plus the uh, composite or the PCM selection, okay, uh, input. Uh, SB is meaning switch both, and this is the switching command if you have a relationship that is through the AV association. SPOXXSA is where you would switch analog audio only, uh, so it's separate of that digital PCM or composite video uh, input. And finally, SI is where we uh, switch just the PCM or video input se uh, separately and independently of the analog audio connections. So you see, we don't, uh, in, in some cases here, we refer to video and it means PCM, okay? Uh, so uh, <coughs> it's the black RCA connection, if you will. As we look at the uh, control commands, SPC, uh, system control, front button, enable, disable, or toggle. Uh, IR source, meaning uh, if you'd like to disable uh, the IR on the uh, sensor uh, or on the 3.5 plug, you can actually do that. Uh, if you'd like to tell and specify the switcher where to look for that. Uh, termination, this is again, as you've seen in the expansion setups, very important when you have multiple units together, setting the address, the number of inputs, the unit number, and factory default reset. Uh, all of those, even the factory default, can be important in setting up large systems, uh, expansion configurations. For the status commands, uh, there's again, just like help, you can narrow it down. Uh, do you want the entire global system status or would you like status response more specific to an output or uh, all the input settings, etc. So as we look at status, you can see here uh, at the very top line, KDMSA 8x8 Pro, I typed in STA, I hit enter and it gives me uh, the following, uh, the unit number, the firmware version, uh, the system address, etc. Your inputs uh, by default input 1, left and right is associated with input 1 PCM, all the way through input 8, eight uh, left and right to 8 PCM. On the output side, it's going to tell you here uh, what each output is selecting. Um, again, just like before, out of the box, one output 1 selects input 1, all the way through output 8 selecting input 8. You can see uh, the, is it a PCM out of the box? Yes, it is set up for PCM, not composite video, mute interval 00, zero that is the out of the box setting, uh, volume, you have your B, that is balance, L is your lows, that's your, your base, okay, so uh, not to confuse the two, mid, treble, lip sync, uh, SPDIF meaning multi-channel, uh, audio, old audio uh, formats. So now we look at expansion deployment for the series and actually the uh, the way we um, <coughs> the nomenclature of the MSA uh, once you go into the expansion configurations there is no pro suffix at the end of the model but uh, for eight input systems we could go eight by eight of course a single unit eight by sixteen two units all the way up to eight by sixty four which would be of course a total of eight units you utilize a Y cable on the front side and again due to the setup that we've done in the software uh, this is one uh, acts as one system where you have no signal degradation whether it be output one or output sixty four so eight by sixteen twenty four eight by thirty two eight by forty eight by forty eight all the way up to 8x64 is possible. In the 16 input configurations, uh, <clears throat> we have, just as we described before, um, your input, inputs 1 through 8 are feeding the odd number units, inputs 9 through 16 feed the even number units, and we can achieve all the way up to 16x64 as well. And on the output side, there's, there's additional Y cabling where we're able to toggle between is it a unit one, uh, an even number input, or is it an odd number input per output.
And again, just review some of the earlier analog matrix products here where we discussed expansion deployment. I'll uh, save everybody some time by uh, not going into all the details for every product because it's very similar from product to product. For the 24 input systems, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for the 24 input systems, 24 through 8, all the way through 24 by 64. And, it, and I apologize here, but it looks like actually the, uh, the, the, the model numbers are incorrect where it should actually be. Okay, and now we look at the 24 input systems. Again, not going to go over all the details again, uh, as it's very similarly accomplished to the uh, previous switchers we discussed, uh, where the MSW CAT essentially did the same thing with uh, RJ45, Y cables, the 16 input systems uh, are achieved the same way. Uh, the MSV does it in uh, the, this very similar sort of way with RCA, excuse me, RCA Y cables. Uh, the 24 input systems, uh, 24 by 8 all the way through 24 by 64. And of course, we could go beyond 24 input systems. As a recap, KD MSW CAT is by far the most flexible and the most uh, capable of large scale configurations. As we take a look here, and, and please uh, contact Key Digital Technical Support and Sales Department for informa more information on these various configurations. Uh, but it ranges all the way from 8x8 uh, to standalone unit. Then you have 8x16 through 8x128, all the way up to 160x8. So you can see there's uh, many possibilities there that uh, should certainly accommodate the, even the most large scale of applications. MSV, that's the matrix switcher of video only, uh, component video only that is. Uh, eight input systems up to eight by 64, uh, 24 by eight through 24 by 64, excuse me, I skipped 16 by eight through 16 by 64, 32 by eight, 32 by 64, 40 by eight through 40 by 56. So we start to lose a little bit uh, on the output side there as far as how many outputs we can supply, all the way up to 48 by eight, 48 by 48. Similarly uh, with the MSA 8x8 Pro as well, 8x8, 8x16 through 8x64, 16x8 through 16x64, 24x8 through 24x64, 32x8 through 32x64, 40x8 through 40x56, and 48x8 uh, to 48x48, 48, 48 in to 48 outs. So <clears throat> what are the advantages that the key digital uh, matrix configurations uh, uh, present to you. Uh, what are the advantages of doing it the way the Key Digital does it? Well, first of all, uh, when you're uh, working to achieve some very large scale configurations, as we're doing here, uh, there is this method, uh, which certainly Key Digital is the leader of, and the other method typically gives you no flexibility. Um, uh, the other method is if I need a 64 output system, I have to buy the big hunking box that has 64 inputs to go along with it. Uh, those sort of products provide no flexibility, they're not space effective, in many cases they're not cost effective, and just preparing for the worst where if you should have a problem with the uh, matrix unit, um, in the way Key Digital does it, you know that's going to be contained to one unit, where, uh, whereas with the other uh, type of products that are all a single unit, um, if you have a problem, that is within that single unit, essentially meaning your entire unit has a problem there, where with us it's one unit within the system. So it's more contained, and uh, from what I've uh, heard from some of these other products out there, uh, even so much as a power supply issue can happen all the time, and, and it's just really going to cause a lot of, uh, a lot of headaches. Um, and secondly, and most importantly perhaps, uh, as far as delivery, is that in this method, there is absolutely no compression. No compression to the video and audio signals. And so uh, this is in contrast to how the other type of products uh, that perhaps are in the marketplace here achieving large scale systems uh, over coaxial, the F cable, uh, F connector type connections do it, where you certainly, uh, they use very inexpensive uh, modulator devices uh, and to achieve large scale dis distribution where there becomes a point that is 
not a very large configuration actually where uh, essentially you're looking at with these, these sort of products adding compression with every additional display that's on there so much so that it's really I've seen these systems in action it <clears throat> to me even the name on the back of the jersey on the back of the sweater becomes hard to read and the quality is not there with those sort of products as they continue to add compression and as they uh, do it over the coaxial um, cabling and you know perhaps the only advantage there is that it is existing infrastructure okay but even with every additional input you must add a, a, an additional uh, unit there where with us a single unit by itself provides eight inputs eight outputs um, so you can see that at some cases it might be more cost effective in the uh, applications where you have a very low amount of inputs but certainly with us as well the amount of inputs we can provide with just a single uh, unit or a double two units 16 by 8 for example 16 by 16 four units etc can be um, much more cost effective as well so I would say to summarize that the advantage to key digital uh, that we've discussed here is really when we discuss the two major alternatives to building large scale configurations this way which is uh, the large box uh, solutions uh, where 16 in, or 64 inputs always comes with 64 outputs and vice versa 48 by 48 there's really not a whole lot of flexibility there and secondly the type of products that uh, achieve large scale distribution uh, with uh, existing coaxial wire um, and again adding much compression with every additional display of the system. So <clears throat> the subject of this level and part, level two, part one, and uh, level two, part two as well, is going to be about building that complete AV system, uh, that complete full circle solution. And in order to do that, you always start with the source and the displays, because you know, after all, this is, this is what we're working to interconnect. So you start, as we see it, with the peripherals and really just what you'd like to achieve and, and how many uh, sources and how many displays do you have determines what's in the middle. Um, <clears throat> for example, here we look at the type of products we've been discussing today where they have many video sources that need to go to many video displays. We know that's going to require a matrix switcher. Now, we look at also audio matrixing, many audio sources to many audio zones, because the projector is, of course, uh, not really uh, what you'd like to rely on for audio of the system. Perhaps they have no audio or uh, limited uh, audio volume at that. And so we can typically go out of the MSA into an amplifier. And now we're going to look at something very important here as I step back one. You look at on your source side, you got your PCs uh, with VGA and analog audio connections. Um, we look at the sources of the satellite and DVD player, though, as component video connections. And this presents an interesting hurdle. Because when you have a matrix switcher, it's all about providing a single wire solution to the display, in this case the projectors, yet allowing access to every source. So if you have a VGA connection yet you're trying to feed it a component source, we know that's not going to work. So what you need uh, in order to uh, uh, enable a system where all of these displays, projectors will have access to every one of these sources, is to scale these sources from component to VGA. And that is where video processors come into play. Where your incoming component video signal is able to be converted to uh, VGA or incoming S-video, composite video, HDMI video signals are able to be converted to your desired format. And finally, to connect each of these projectors, we'll use balance with the category cabling that's ran to each location. So it's very important. You do your formatting up front. And how do you determine what format of your system? Well, uh, usually it's a case of majority rules. Here in Key Digital System Design Group, that's, uh, that's the rule as far as uh, when you have to make a decision. 
It could also be the desire of you, of you as the installer, as the system designer, or of your client. I want a full HDMI system, for example, they may tell you. But in many cases, majority rules. What do we mean by that? Well, um, <clears throat> we look at the projectors. We say, what format, uh, what connectivity types do they support? We look at the sources and we say, what do they support? And usually there's a clear cut, hey, we have five VGA sources and two component video sources, for example, where the projectors support both of those. So it's more cost effective to use a scaler to convert component to VGA where only two video sources need that versus VGA to component where five of the seven sources identified here would need that. So it's usually a case of majority rules um, <clears throat> when determining what video format you'd, you'd like to use. Now, Key Digital has had uh, video processors uh, for a number of years, as we discussed in Level 1 Part 1, for example, the HD Lisa was really a flagship product here at Key Digital for years and years. Um, scalers have certainly lost their uh, importance, in, in my opinion, and, and, and as we see in the industry as a whole, um, in the residential side, because your source equipment, for the most part now, is all capable of outputting at 1080p. Uh, even your DVD players can be purchased for a uh, very inexpensive price point, $30 to $50 even for a, a very simple DVD player with up conversion from that 480i uh, resolution of a DVD all the way up to 1080i or 1080p for example. Scalers are still very necessary though in uh, commercial installations where they may have uh, again, a majority of sources being computer, but want to have access to that cable box, satellite box, where they may have the necessity of uh, VCRs in the classroom or in the church, uh, of course, at a composite or S-video format output, and converting that to uh, the format, the connectivity type of the system. So we look here in Key Digital as, uh, again, always had scalers and uh, at certain points in our uh, existence that had been our um, uh, bread and butter offering, if you will. And you look today and you still even see the, res uh, the relevance of Key Digital in the scalar offer offering, where, for example, we see here CE Pro as identified by the top 100 dealers. For those of you familiar with this publication each year, CE Pro top 100, and they ask those top 100 dealers, who do they utilize for different product categories and those top 100 dealers 14 percent of them identify key digital I like to think of us as still the number one independently sold video processor by the top 100 dealers uh, because Runco being a projection company you need the scaler for many of those projectors and it's kind of a package uh, but not to take anything away from them uh, certainly uh, they make fantastic products so you see here key digital with 14 percent market share is identified by the CE Pro top 100 dealers. And we look at our Swiss Army knife in the video processor world, if you will. That is the KD VP1250. With the KD VP1250, this basically gives you one of every input format type. You have a composite video, you have an S video, you have a shared high definition analog uh, video input that is a 15 pin VGA connection that will input either VGA signal or component and simply uh, select one or the other when you do your switching. <clears throat> you also have an HDMI input. So uh, one of every input type uh, that HDMI supporting DVI as well or display port as we discussed. You can follow the tables here and you can see uh, the input and output uh, acceptances and you can see this can fit in every application. For example, VGA, is it the most uh, wide array of VGA incoming input resolutions where we see 640 by 480, 800 by 600, uh, 1024 by 768, and 1280 by 1024? No, it is not the widest array of acceptance, but it is the resolutions that every single laptop or PC that needs to per perhaps go into that 1250 are going to output. <clears throat> um, also of note is that HDMI on the scaling, we limit it to 1080i input. Why do we do that? Well, <clears throat> yes, your Blu-ray players can output 1080p, 
but actually at 1080p 60 frames per second, that is not the native frame rate of that Blu-ray uh, disc. It is actually mastered at 1080p 24 frames per second, which carries a similar bandwidth of 1080i. So that scaling to 60 frames per second is often done inside that Blu-ray player. And if you are to compare a professional video scaler to perhaps a $100 commodity Blu-ray player, of course, the performance and the picture quality is, uh, it will certainly be better from that professional video scaler. So when we look here again, composite S-video, as we look from uh, the right-hand side there, composite and S-video inputs, VGA or component on the analog high-definition input, and HDMI, DVI on the HDMI input connection. On the output side, you have both HDMI, DVI, or the analog high definition component <coughs> VGA HD15. Um, it should, uh, it's important to note that there are two VGA to three wire breakout cables in the packaging for the VP1250. So you, uh, if you're using it for component video applications, you do not have to purchase external uh, additional accessories. <coughs> For that, the, um, the there is one limitation, of course, if you are inputting an HDMI HDCP embedded source, copyright protection embedded source, we cannot output on the analog high definition output, only on the HDMI output. Of course, it would be a violation of copyright protection high definition copyright protection to output that as analog. That down conversion is uh, against the rules, if you will, and as such, this product would not support that. So you take a look here, and this is an application example of the 1250 as the switcher for the conference room, for example. This is a single box solution where your audio may be separate VP1250 does not support, uh, does not feature any external audio connections. However, it does support audio over the HDMI as a pass through, if you will. The HDMI in can have the audio, that HDMI out will have audio. But typically, this is utilized in, uh, as, a, as the standalone, uh, the, the, the headpiece, the, the main piece of the uh, single room unit um, with some sort of audio uh, amplifier, for example or DSP. Uh, you will have your HDMI, your component or VGA input, your composite video, your S-video input types, uh, perhaps all of them if you'd like, using it as a switcher as well as a scalar processor. And you could even have up to two outputs connected, again, uh, VGA or component and HDMI. Uh, so long as your HDMI source is not HDCP, that uh, VGA or component, that analog output will be active. Uh, in the case that you do have HDCP, only the HDMI output will be active. So it's, uh, it's, it's commonly used as the standalone, the, the, uh, the main piece of that, uh, that single conference room, for example, application. It's also most commonly used, I'd say, as a means of converting um, that, as we saw in the earlier example, that incoming video signal to the format of the system, whether it be uh, analog or digital, as you can see here. So that's why we label this as a Swiss Army knife, because uh, comparatively to other sw switchers, uh, switcher scalers in the industry, this is actually uh, at a quite attractive price point. And uh, please, again, uh, reach out to your key digital representatives or channels of obtaining the product to learn more about that. And also, it is, <coughs> uh, it, it is at a good price point, and it is also um, very flexible, giving you basically one of every flavor, one of everything you may need. So quickly looking at the help commands, uh, what is all possible through this scaler? Is it just formatting to HDMI? Uh, yes, it does that, for example, or to VGA, but there are a lot of options for you in determining that. Um, for example, output resolution, you have uh, SPORXY. X is the format, the resolution, if you will. Y is the frame rate, one or two. One being 60 frames per second, two being 50, fr uh, 50 frames per second. So this is also a handy piece 
for your PAL to NTSC conversions or NTSC to PAL for that matter. Uh, output, would you like it to be 480i, 480p, SVGA resolution, XGA resolution, uh, 1360 by 768, SXGA, 720p, 1080i, all the way up to 1080p. Uh, so for example, if you're setting this up as 1080i at 60 frames per second, SPOR81. Output, uh, the analog output, uh, again, it's a 15 pin connection. Is that going to be component or RGBHV for you? Aspect ratio, 4.3 or 16 by 9. Very handy if you have 4.3 projection screens, for example. Understand overscan, where we can actually decrease, uh, it's almost like a zoom in, zoom out type feature, from negative 5% to plus 5%. The input, this is your switching command. Composite, S-Video, Component, RGBHV, or HDMI. So again, just uh, that's how you determine is it a component or an RGBHV input on, on that shared analog high-def input connection. Positioning, horizontal and vertical positioning per input. Okay, so this is an input positioning command. Horizontal and vertical, and this uh, is a uh, setting that you could maybe do initially that will be stored until you instruct it differently per input. And on the output, or on the uh, control rather, uh, front button enable, disable, toggle, okay? This is so if you do these setups and, uh, you, and it is in the conference room, but you'd like to uh, prevent them from manipulating the settings at all. And of course, reset to factory default. Should also be noted that the VP1250 has a handy on screen display. Um, the on screen display that actually does not have the full uh, amount of control and, and setup commands that the RS232 features. So when you purchase and install the VP1250, you'll want to come out with your computers, with the hyper terminal, for example, to uh, uh, send these initial setup commands. and STA, your status for the entire system. All right, that concludes it. So you can see there how the video processors are very important for building that full circle solution. We're going to look more at that for digital systems as well in the upcoming uh, uh, training, uh, level one, part two, excuse me, level two, part two. Uh, so to review quickly here, we introduced you to matrix switchers, the concept of a matrix. When you use a matrix, we went over the matrix switcher that has that RJ45 built in, making it a nice, clean, uh, convenient installation where you just plug in that RJ45 and you go to your displays. Uh, we talked about the balance pairing, so that's the MSW Cat 8x8 matrix and its various custom configurations and the balance pairing options uh, of that MSW Cat 8x8. Uh, control routing, we discussed that. How is that possible? We discussed the large system configurations. We talked about the KD MS V8 by 8, which is the component uh, video only matrix switcher. Um, <clears throat> uh, went over all the various expansion configurations and control setup features for that product. And the KD MSA 8 by 8 Pro, the sister product to the video uh, matrix, if you will, uh, of course, has many uh, interesting audio control features. Uh, audio conversion features, and we also discussed the expansion SKUs for that. And then what should happen if you have one oddball or a few oddball sources that you need to convert to the, the, the uh, majority rules format of that system, you use the KDVP 1250 scaler. So up next will be level two, part two, where we're going to look at, a, we're going to take a similar approach and a similar look at the digital matrix switcher product line, the key digital features and in our full circle digital systems uh, training portion. Thank you very much for, uh, for attending and we'll see you in the next section.